Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Dose of Encouragement for uh, November 9th, 2021. It's hard to believe we're, 2021 is getting away from us so fast and uh, already into November and and um, um, just um, amazing how, how time uh, can get away from us so quick. It's great to see everybody this morning and so thankful that you've tuned in. Uh, it's good to see you, Brother Jerry. Hey, Tracy, uh, good morning to you and your family and um, to all of you who have uh, joined in here with us today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Nicodemus a little bit. Uh, there's a, a, a series out. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always slow, it seems like, to find out about these series uh, that, that come out on television. Um, I, this particular series is already into its second season, and, and I'm just now <laughs> starting to watch it. It seems like uh, that always happens to me. I don't start watching a show until it's off the air or, or several seasons into it. But this particular series is called uh, The Chosen, and uh, it's a dramatic series depicting uh, the life of Jesus and the various people that um, are, are in the stories that are told in the, the gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I, I've only watched the first episode, but um, I'm very excited to, to uh, continue the series. And uh, what I've seen so far is very well done and, and very interesting uh, in the way they uh, depict the characters, uh, the, which of course are, are real people, uh, that really, uh, inter, um, intersected with Jesus in, in his life. But anyway, I, I said all of that to say that, that one of the characters who's highlighted in that first episode is, is Nicodemus. And that got me to thinking about him and, and looking at some scriptures that, where he's mentioned, He's only mentioned on three occasions in Scripture, and all of those three occasions are in the book of John. First one's in John chapter 3, if you want to go ahead and be opening your Bible there. But as you follow him through these three occasions, you see something happening. Each time he's mentioned, you, you can see that his faith is growing. And um, while on the first occasion he comes to Jesus at night because it seems that he doesn't want to be seen or at that point he's trying to keep his investigation of Jesus private. Uh, but by the last occasion, uh, we see him standing strong and, and making a bold statement and not being ashamed to publicly display his devotion to the Lord. And as you follow Nicodemus through that, you see this, this process. He's wrestling with his thoughts and what he believes, and he's trying to come to some conclusions about Jesus. And it doesn't happen all at, want, uh, all at once. It takes time. Uh, and, and little by little and step by step, he does seem to get to a point of greater spiritual maturity. And in the end, uh, it seems that his faith is able to overcome his fear. And I love that story because I think a lot of us, we can associate with that. We understand that, you know, we look at ourselves as Christians right now, and we're not really what we want to be yet, but we can look back and see, well, we're not what we once were. We have made progress over the years to get to the point that w where we are and and we want to continue to make progress so that we become more mature and, and more stable in our faith and service to God that's the way it is and, and we can get so down on ourselves that we're not maybe where we want to be spiritually uh, but we want to uh, be careful about doing that because um, if we overload ourselves with, with too much guilt and shame, we might find ourselves stunting that process of growth and getting stuck uh, where we are now or even reverting backwards. So there has to be a balance where we pu push ourselves to continue to go forward, but at the same time we accept 
that it's a process and it takes time and we need to stick with that process. Now, as I said, you can definitely see that process at work in the life of Nicodemus. We're first introduced to him in John chapter 3. And verse 1 tells us that there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So, at first, we, we see Nicodemus as a man of clout and position. He's a man of the Pharisees, so he's looked up to as a religious leader. He's a ruler of the Jews, so he's considered one of the most uh, intelligent scholars of uh, the Jewish faith. And because of that position, it seems that that Jesus come uh, that that he comes to Jesus at night. At night, now the Bible doesn't really tell us that he came to why he came to Jesus at night. But it is interesting that every time he's mentioned in Scripture, it says that he came to Jesus by night. That that's sort of how he's identified in Scripture. And it just seems to me that at that point. You know, he's, he's wrestling with the truth about Jesus, but he's not quite ready to be publicly recognized as listening to Jesus and studying with him and investigating who he is. Now, he already has some positive impressions of Jesus. He calls him a rabbi. He acknowledges the signs that Jesus did. Uh, in the show, The Chosen, um, this is all dramatic. Uh, you know, obviously when they make a, a TV show, they take a lot of poetic license and dramatize things. And, um, there's a lot in that first episode that's not really told in scripture, but it, I think it is an interesting way of, of telling the story. And, and what that is, is that there, there is a scene of, of Nicodemus as this great respected rabbi, and he is, requested to come and try to help a woman who is possessed with demons. And so he comes in burning his incense and offering his prayers and crying out to the demons that possess her. And it, it is completely ineffective. It, it benefits her not in the least. And then later, uh, Jesus comes along, of course, and he, he heals this woman. And in the show, it, it, it depicts how this impresses Nicodemus. It, the, here comes this rabbi from Nazareth who can do things that, that Nicodemus could not do. Now, again, that, that story is not specifically told in Scripture, but it is, is, it is interesting to uh, compare it to the statement that Nicodemus makes to Jesus where he says, no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So Nicodemus is asking the right questions. Now, as we come forward over into John chapter 7 and verse 50, we see the second occasion when Nicodemus is mentioned. As it said, uh, Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews, which probably means that he was on the Sanhedrin court, which was the highest Jewish court in all of the world at that time. And at this time, the court has already developed bitter hatred toward Jesus and is already beginning plots to uh, try to squash his, uh, his influence among the people and even potentially murder him or execute him. And so the crowd is discussing this and they're trying to come up with a plan for how they can uh, get rid of this man from Nazareth. And it's here that, that Nicodemus speaks up. Verse 50 says that Nicodemus, who came to Jesus by night, being one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man before it hears him and knows what he is doing? Now, mind you, this is not, um, you know, maybe quite as bold a declaration or overt a declaration of support for Jesus as, as um, one may hope, but 
Yet still, it, it, it took a great deal of courage for him to say anything favorable whatsoever. And, and basically what he's saying is it's not fair for the court to, to judge a man when they haven't heard him. And here they've already rendered a verdict against Jesus, and they haven't really listened to what he had to say or examined what he's been doing. So first the man comes to Jesus by night, maybe perhaps not wanting to be seen, but now here he is, and maybe he's not quite all the way out there to say that he believes in Jesus, but he is uh, uh, allowing himself to be seen and heard favoring Jesus in uh, uh, to a certain degree. So perhaps this is a step beyond where he was before. And then the final occasion where Nicodemus is mentioned is over in John chapter 19. After the death of Jesus, the Bible says that Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for, the, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, and about a hundred pounds. And they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with spices, as the custom of the Jews is to bury. This is a bold step by both Joseph and Nicodemus. By honoring the body of Jesus in this way, he was making a... Um, a bold claim that he did not side with the decision of the council. They made the decision to execute this man. Normally, you, you don't honor uh, the death or the body of a criminal. But by doing this, Nicodemus is taking his step. He, he is taking his side with Jesus to honor him, which shows he does not agree with the decision that the council made. And once Nicodemus does this, there's no going back. The council is not going to recognize him anymore at this point. This was a courageous, courageous thing that, that Nicodemus did. Isn't it interesting to see how this, this process happened in his life? First, he comes to Jesus but he comes at night. Secondly, he doesn't say uh, that he has faith in Jesus, but he at least does speak in a favorable way before others. And then finally, he takes that final step to side with Jesus. And my guess would be remain faithful to that for the rest of his life. Spiritual growth is a process, folks. Let's, get, let's not give up on that process. Whether you find yourself in chapter 3, chapter 7, or chapter 19 in your own personal life today, don't give up. You may not be where you want to be, but be thankful that you're not where you once were. And be thankful that God has given you an opportunity to keep moving forward in your faith. And God help us continue to grow and the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's bow together and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for another day of life, and a life filled with so much love and so many good blessings. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, physically, emotionally, and most of all, spiritually. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his perfect life, for his teaching. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us to be true disciples. Help us to be followers, Lord, of him and all that we think, say, and do. Help us to live the faithful Christian life so that others may come to know him and follow him as well. I'm so thankful, Lord, for everyone who's joined in for our devotional today. I pray that we all can receive encouragement today as we continue that process of of spiritual growth and the development of our faith. We're thankful, Father, for your grace that has brought us to this point. 
and pray that you will continue to help us grow until we become more and more like Jesus and more and more the person that you would have us to be. We continue our prayers today for those who are sick, those who are dealing with health issues, and those who are struggling uh, in, in emotional ways. And just pray, Father, for your blessings upon each situation as the, the need arises. Please forgive us of our sins and help us as we strive to be uh, an example to others today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me this morning. I hope your Tuesday is great and look forward to seeing you on Thursday morning at 9 o'clock for our next dose of encouragement. Till then, God bless. Love you all.